Hello, uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, I'm joined here today with my colleague, the Honorable Omar Al Gabra, Minister of Transport, and my Parliamentary Secretary, uh, Marie France Lelande. For six weeks now, the world has watched uh, in shock and horror as uh, the Russian armed forces have invaded and assaulted the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and right to self determination of Ukraine and its people. Dozens of cities and communities, large and small, have been destroyed and Ukrainians have mounted a brave defense of their homeland. That incredible defiance and fight for their sovereign rights continues today. Le Canada continue de soutenir le peuple ukrainien qui défend son pays contre cette attaque. Le Canada a réagi rapidement et Immigration réfugiée et Citoyenneté Canada a pris plusieurs mesures pour soutenir les Ukrainiens. Working with our partners, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that Ukrainians are supported over the course of their stay in Canada. I'd like to share that since launching last month, Canada has now approved more than 30,000 applications for those seeking to come here under the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel. That number is in addition to the thousands who were approved under programs that pre-existed this new and innovative measure. Il s'agit d'une voie d'accès accélérée au Canada qui prévoit des séjours de trois ans pour ceux qui en ont besoin. Ces nouveaux arrivants viendront avec une permis de travail en main. Les enfants pourront aller à l'école et ils auront accès à des possibilités de travail et d'études. To reduce the pressure on biometrics collection, we are exempting biometrics for people under the age of 18, over the age of 60, and those with previous Canadian visas that have no derogatory immigration history and who hold supporting documents. Cette décision a été prise dans les plus grands soucis de la sécurité des Canadiens, tout en facilitant le traitement des demandes des Ukrainiens fouillés à fouillant uh, l'invasion à grande échelle de l'Ukraine par la Russie. Again, these decisions regarding biometric exemptions have been taken with great care for the safety and security of Canadians. We're also doing everything that we can to help facilitate travel for those who may not have travel documents. This means that for family members of Canadian citizens and permanent residents currently residing in Ukraine who don't hold valid travel documents, I IRCC can issue single journey travel documents on an exceptional basis to support their travel to Canada. Even though most Ukrainians are arriving as temporary residents, we announced recently that we would expand settlement supports for all Ukrainians coming to Canada in recognition of the special circumstances that they're facing and the potential, uh, potentially uh, immense needs that they may be uh, uh, requiring to have met. This means that Ukrainians will have access to key services to help them settle into their new communities. This includes things like language training, information about life in Canada, information on how to enroll children in schools, employment aid and services for women, seniors, youth, and LGBTQ2 plus individuals. Pour ceci, nous allons compter sur le plus de 550 agences de services d'établissement à travers le Canada qui se mobilisent pour jouer un rôle clé dans le soutien des Ukrainiens après leur arrivée. I want to highlight that starting this month, uh, we are going to be supporting efforts to provide Ukrainians with arrival packages at Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton uh, airports. These packages will include key information on supports and services available to Ukrainians, and the information will be provided in Ukrainian on request as well. C'est ce que nous devons faire. Nous savons que venir vivre dans un nouveau pays, même temporairement, n'est pas facile. Et nous continuerons à chercher des moyens de soutenir davantage les Ukrainiens après leur arrivée. But we know that we can do more. This morning, at the Stand Up for Ukraine pledging event, the Prime Minister announced additional supports for Ukrainians fleeing Putin's illegal and unjust war and who are arriving under the Canada-Ukraine authorization for emergency travel. These include new income supports for Ukrainians for up to six weeks for those who need it after they arrive to get them started here in Canada on the right foot and ensure that they have access to the basic necessities. We're also going to provide temporary hotel accommodations for up to two weeks to make sure that those needing a place to stay have access to initial accommodations in those early days after they first arrive. Ce matin, lors de l'événement Stand Up for Ukraine, le Premier ministre a annoncé des mesures de soutien supplémentaires pour les Ukrainiens qui fuient la guerre illégale de Poutine et qui arrivent grâce à l'autorisation de voyage de Jones Canada-Ukraine. Il s'agit notamment de nouveaux soutiens aux revenus pour les Ukrainiens, jusqu'à six semaines pour ceux qui en ont besoin. Cette mesure leur permet de partir des bons pieds au Canada et d'avoir accès aux nécessités de base. Nous allons également fournir des chambres d'hôtel temporaires pour une durée de deux semaines afin de nous assurer que ceux qui, euh, ceux qui euh, ont besoin d'un endroit où rester a accès à un premier logement. 
I'd also like to thank in particular our provincial and territorial partners who have stepped up to provide access to health care and education for Ukrainians. Your support, alongside the 550 resettlement organizations across the country, has been instrumental in making sure that those fleeing the war are supported not just on their path to getting to Canada, but after they arrive. And I want to say from the very beginning, the spirit of Team Canada and support for Ukraine has been something that has motivated me to continue my work, and I'm incredibly grateful for these partnerships that we've built. We look forward to building on our partnerships with provincial and territorial governments, NGOs, the Canadian business community, and Canadians at large as we come together to help those in Ukraine. This is all happening very quickly, and further details are going to be available in the days and weeks ahead as these new measures begin to take effect. I am, however, confident the actions that we're taking today demonstrate our ongoing and determined support for the people of Ukraine. Nous continuerons à chercher des moyens de soutenir les personnes qui fuient la guerre en Ukraine. I'd like now to turn things over to my colleague, the Honorable Omar Al-Gabra, Minister of Transport. Thank you. Merci tout le monde. Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fraser, and thank you, Parliamentary Secretary Lalon. Vladimir Putin's illegal and unjustifiable invasion of Ukraine has created a humanitarian crisis. We remain committed to doing everything we can to ending this horrific war and to supporting Ukraine. That's why we closed our airspace to Russian and Belarusian aircraft, closed our waters to Russian vessels, and are providing military and economic aid to the Ukrainian government and its people. No one should be forced to flee their homes, and we are committed to helping Ukrainians who have had to leave their country because of this illegal war. That is why we are working with Canadian airlines to organize charter flights to bring Ukrainians fleeing the war to Canada. Nous travaillons avec la compagnie aérienne canadienne pour organiser des vols nous les afin d'amener les Ukrainiens fuyant la guerre au Canada. These charter flights, along with other measures the Prime Minister announced this morning, at the Stand Up for Ukraine event will make it easier for Ukrainians to travel to Canada and take advantage of the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel Program. They will also provide relief to our European partners who are currently supporting displaced Ukrainians. I would also like to echo Minister Fraser and thank our provincial and territorial partners for their assistance in providing support to Ukrainians arriving in Canada. We will continue to work together to ensure Ukrainians have a safe and secure arrival. At this situ as this situation unfolds, I know we can count on our transportation partners across the country to work with us to help the people of Ukraine. As Canadians, we will do what we do best. We will stand up for Ukrainians and warmly welcome them as they adjust to new life here in their new country. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Uh, merci. Um, so at this time, we'll take uh, questions from uh, reporters. On va prendre des questions des journalistes. Donc, s'il y a des journalistes uh, branchés en ce moment sur Zoom, uh, veuillez utiliser la fonction « Lever la main » pour uh, poser une question au ministre. So if there are uh, journalists... Uh, on the line, please use the raise hand function at this time to ask a question. Uh, we'll start. Nous allons commencer avec Olivier uh, Lefebvre de Radio-Canada. Oui, bonjour. Merci, uh, Boris. Euh, ma question serait au niveau euh, des vols euh, nolisés. Donc, on savait que le gouvernement euh, fédéral euh, travaillait pour euh, nolisés des vols avec les compagnies aériennes pour... Euh, faire venir euh, des Ukrainiens qui fuient leur pays. J'aimerais savoir, euh, est-ce qu'on sait quand ces vols nolisés-là euh, seront accessibles? Puis on parle de... Euh, J'aimerais connaître un peu l'ampleur de l'opération. On parle de combien de vols? Est-ce que ça va être accessible euh, à des dizaines de milliers d'Ukrainiens dont on a accepté la demande? Donc, j'aimerais en savoir plus là-dessus. Thank you for, for the question. Um, um, we've been working uh, collaboratively with Canadian um, airlines 
And I do want to take a moment to thank them. Um, they've uh, continued to display enthusiasm and commitment to working with us on ensuring that we provide safe passage to Ukrainians who want to come to Canada. Um, uh, work is ongoing in finalizing the details of, uh, of the number of charters and where they're going to go. Um, I'm hoping that we can resolve these discussions and, and, and sign agreements in the coming days. I don't have a specific date for you yet, but, uh, but work is ongoing as we speak. Uh, if I can uh, offer um, a supplementary piece of information uh, to, to my colleague, um, I, I should point out as well uh, that this effort is unlike uh, many traditional refugee resettlement efforts uh, in that after a person is approved to come to travel under the Canada-Ukraine authorization for emergency travel, we're seeing that they have the ability to continue to move through Europe. It's not a circumstance where we have, uh, for example, a refugee camp next to an airstrip with thousands of people who are waiting to board a plane. Uh, one of the things that we are doing in the next number of days and weeks is reaching out to everyone who's been approved to come to Canada to better understand what their travel plans are. We are hearing on the ground that not everyone who has applied or been approved for travel to Canada intends to travel right away. Uh, some of them has take, have taken out the uh, taken advantage of the program uh, on a speculative basis, uh, almost as though it's an insurance policy, uh, because they're waiting to see what happens and have a desire to remain as close to Ukraine as possible. Until we have that information about the travel intent of the different travelers, uh, you can appreciate it. It is more difficult than an ordinary uh, effort to understand the precise needs. We're going to continue to work to identify what other options uh, we can develop to facilitate the arrival of additional people in Canada. Follow-up, uh, Olivier? Oui, merci. Uh, J'aimerais un, un, un follow-up, une relance sur uh, les données uh, biométriques. Donc, il en a été question uh, dans la dernière semaine. J'aimerais entendre le ministre Fraser. J'ai une question à savoir pourquoi est-ce que les données biométriques qui sont requises encore pour uh, certaines, ben, plusieurs personnes, donc catégories de personnes, est -ce, pourquoi est-ce qu'ils ne sont pas collectés à l'arrivée dans les aéroports canadiens plutôt qu'à l'étranger? C'est quoi la raison pourquoi? Uh, th thank you for, for the question. Uh, one of the reasons that we uh, have biometrics uh, analysis as, as part of not just uh, the effort in Ukraine, but, but all of our other refugee resettlement programs um, is that we want to understand uh, who is applying to our program uh, before they arrive because there's an important security uh, element to, to the process. Uh, of course, if you're going to be screening for security, it makes sense uh, to do that before people arrive. Um, this is based on the advice uh, not of uh, myself and my colleagues sitting behind closed doors in Ottawa, but on the advice of people who are expert uh, in security assessments who've recommended that for certain low-risk cohorts that I referred to in my remarks, uh, we've had the ability, uh, the ability to create those exemptions. Uh, we are continuing to follow those who've left Ukraine to make sure that we add additional resources to locations where we see increased flows of people. Uh, we're monitoring this in real time and have been adding resources in Warsaw, Bucharest, Bratislava, opening additional presences in both Warsaw and Berlin, uh, as we're seeing significant numbers of people who are making applications. Uh, I should point out uh, that we now have the capacity to process uh, 19,000 biometrics uh, appointments uh, each week, and uh, we're going to continue to monitor those migration flows so people can have access in a timely way to biometrics appointments once they apply to take advantage of this new program. Merci. Uh, the next question is, la prochaine question est uh, de Marie-Josée Paquette-Comeau de Radio-Canada. Vous pouvez uh, vous enlever votre sourdine. Oui, bonjour. Merci beaucoup, euh, Boris. Euh, je vais juste euh, relancer. Si j'ai bien compris, euh, ministre Fraser, vous avez parlé que des, des Ukrainiens réussissaient à venir au Canada. Est-ce qu'ils essayaient d'y aller sans avoir le programme spécial que vous avez mis en œuvre? Là? Je dirais juste que vous m'expliquiez. Est-ce qu'il y a des Ukrainiens qui réussissent à arriver à Montréal ou au Canada sans euh, cette autorisation-là? Et si oui, combien? Yeah. <laughs> 
je n'ai pas les, euh, je, je, je n'ai pas le, le, le nombre de, de peuples qui arrivaient au Montréal euh, en spécifique. Uh, but uh, across Canada, uh, we have seen uh, more than 12,000 people arrive. Uh, that, that's b since January 1st. Um, but there are a significant number of people who've been approved. Uh, not all of them have arrived quite yet under the ordinary visa process that we were processing on an expedited way since January 19th. Um, the last uh, number that I saw of the number who've been approved prior to the creation of the, the new expedited program uh, was nearly 8,000 uh, that have been approved under a program before uh, the Canada-Ukraine authorization for emergency travel had, had opened up. Uh, I don't have the numbers specifically on a city-by-city -city basis because, of course, after a person arrives, given that they're coming as, as visitors, uh, they have the ability to travel within Canada uh, at, their, uh, at their choice. Um, we are going to be uh, getting better information uh, in the days ahead because as of April 1st, uh, we have... Uh, reception at the airports that are collecting information about where people intend to um, uh, uh, intend to arrive. Uh, just for uh, ajouter à la réponse, uh, j'ai invité uh, ma secrétaire parlementaire uh, Marie-France Lelande pour uh, offrir des perspectives. Merci, uh, Monsieur le ministre. Écoutez, um, dans le fond, au début, en janvier, nous avons procédé à une augmentation au niveau des mesures et c'est environ 8 000 personnes qui sont venues au Canada à savoir où exactement. Vous le savez, il y avait déjà des liens, des amis. Euh, ici, maintenant, depuis euh, la création euh, du nouveau programme, on a euh, approuvé plus de 30 000 euh, Ukrainiens qui sont encore en Ukraine. Euh, on parle environ de ceux qui sont arrivés 12 000 en tout. Euh, les chiffres sont approximatifs parce que, bon, les gens arrivent. Je pense qu'une mesure très importante, c'est que depuis le 1er avril, euh, dans les points de service des aéroports, donc Toronto, euh, on parle Vancouver, Edmonton, euh, nous allons avoir une meilleure idée et perspective et recueillir un peu plus d'informations. On a aussi, comme vous le savez très bien, euh, augmenté euh, au niveau des mesures d'aide, au niveau de l'orientation orientation, euh, de l'aide pour trouver des emplois, donc, euh, et ça aussi en ukrainien, euh, au point de service des aéroports. Donc, ça va nous permettre d'avoir une plus grande perspective, mais aussi une meilleure idée euh, des gens par rapport au déplacement interprovincial qu'ils vont, euh, qu vont choisir euh, eux-mêmes. Question suivie, Marie-Josée oui, une question sur euh, le soutien du revenu, le, le, le income support. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez nous donner euh, combien d'argent vont recevoir, euh, par exemple, peut recevoir une famille ukrainienne pendant six semaines et avez-vous évalué les coûts euh, reliés à ce, 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 cet argent et les coûts aussi déterminés pour les hôtels qui seront, euh, qui seront proposés pour ces Ukrainiens? Je... Oh. Uh, merci pour la question. Uh, right now, there are still further details to emerge. Uh, we're looking at a $500 a week uh, uh, level of support over six weeks. Um, one of the things that's challenging, particularly when we uh, look at the accommodations, uh, is the fact that um, it's unclear to the, the extent to which um, accommodations are going to be needed because we're seeing in the early days a significant number of the people who've arrived in Canada have strong relationships, whether it's family relationships, a previous employment history, connections to people in Canada uh, who have been willing to uh, offer accommodations to the people who've, uh, who've arrived here. Um, so we do see when we build a, a program that's driven on demand, uh, it makes it a little bit uh, more difficult, uh, but, uh, but we will uh, be monitoring those numbers very closely obviously, as, as more and more people begin to arrive. Merci. Uh, thank you. The next question is uh, Heather Butts from Bell Media. Can go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thank you for taking my question. 
Reaching out from CTV National News, I'm hoping you could confirm or clarify some of those numbers, uh, Minister Fraser, that you went over in regards to the number of people who uh, have applied through the old program and the new program. And I'm hoping you can confirm, I believe you said about 30,000 have applied through your new program. Have any of those people actually arrived here in Canada so far? Uh, I don't have the numbers for you right now of people who've arrived under the new program. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, and it, it's it's not because uh, because I, I don't personally know it. it it's it's because there's uh, approvals that have come in very recently. So under the new program, it's not that thirty thousand have applied; it's that more than thirty thousand have now been approved. Um, the people who have been approved uh, came under a program that was launched on March seventeenth. March 17th, uh, kickstarted a two week processing time. So it's only been since the, uh, roughly the, the first of April that approvals have started coming. So in the past nine days or so, there's been 30,000 people approved. Uh, we don't, uh, yet have the, uh, I haven't seen over the last couple of days, the total number that have arrived in Canada who've been approved under the new number. I'm happy. Uh, I, I expect I'm going to get an update on that uh, within the next few days, and we'll be happy to share it with you. Um, the other numbers that I referred to, just to for the sake of, of more clearly articulating uh, the point, uh, there were nearly 8,000 people who had been approved since we uh, started expediting applications as of January 19th under uh, uh, our different programs to come to Canada for every application that was attached to a Ukrainian national. Um, the other number that we shared was that there are more than 12,000 people who've arrived in Canada since the beginning of the year. Uh, that uh, The dissonance that you see between some of those numbers is driven by the fact that there are some people who may have been entitled to come to Canada before we launched our expedited process as of January 19th or the new uh, Canada-Ukraine authorization for emergency travel that made a decision to come to Canada, perhaps because the conflict was uh, was looming when the uh, the potential for this further invasion into Ukraine uh, uh, became something the public was was more aware of. Uh, so those are the, uh, the the explanations for the different numbers. Uh, as soon as we start to see larger pe numbers of people arrive under this new authorization for emergency travel, I'll, I'll be very happy to share that information with you, and I expect to have an update within. In, uh, within a few days. Thank you. And just a follow-up question in regards to your hotel um, announcement that you've just made, is there a process in place for you to uh, help transition or help uh, these refugees transition from hotels to uh, community living spaces to their own apartments? Uh, there are reports of, of Afghan refugees still living in hotels uh, and they've arrived here several months ago. Uh, yeah, this is something that we're uh, we're working on presently in collaboration with our settlement agency partners and provincial and territorial partners, and, and frankly, uh, Canadians at, at large. Um, I, and I really do want to say thank you, uh, though, though it wasn't specifically your question. The, the collaboration that I've seen from our, our provincial and territorial counterparts and, and from the nonprofit sector um, ha has demonstrated uh, how lucky we are to have uh, a unanimous push to support people in their time of need. Um, one of the things that's unique from uh, other refugee resettlement initiatives is that in a typical refugee resettlement context, because people are coming on a permanent basis and because they're paired up in advance of their arrival with certain communities, uh, whether it's because uh, they've come through a private sponsored refugee stream or because uh, they're coming through a government assisted refugee program where we know certain settlement capacities in certain communities have the capacity to successfully settle people. People, um, we're able to, uh, with more specificity, understand where a particular family is going to uh, live after they arrive. Uh, we made a decision early on in our response to the uh, this this further invasion into Ukraine by by Russia uh, that we want it to have speed be the paramount concern in the development of this program uh, because uh, many Ukrainians had safe passage outside of the country uh, and then had the ability to look at different options uh, as to which countries they would they would look to for a safe haven. Uh, we wanted to make sure we didn't delay the opportunity for people to arrive in Canada. Many of the people uh, who are arriving have a connection to Canada and have 
uh, family members, as I mentioned, or, or uh, personal contacts who are helping them sort out accommodations. Um, the efforts that we're focusing on now are to identify further opportunities to partner uh, with those who have accommodations uh, that will be able to match them with Ukrainians who are in need of housing. Uh, we're working right now when we reach out to uh, people who've been approved to come to Canada to understand where it is they want to go and what their needs might be. Uh, we're reaching out to those who've been approved before they travel, but we're also using the new reception services that we've established to begin with at, uh, at Toronto, Edmonton and Vancouver airports uh, to uh, to make sure that we, um, uh, we understand where people want to go after they arrive as well in case their plans have changed in the interim. Uh, this is an effort that's unlike anything we've ever seen, uh, both in terms of the situation on the ground and in terms of the development of a new temporary protection model uh, for vulnerable people who are fleeing a humanitarian crisis. And, and I should say, I, I note that um, uh, although there wasn't a, a Quebec airport listed uh, in my, my comments just now, uh, the province of Quebec has been an absolute leader uh, on this uh, response. And uh, as is typical, the case with matters of immigration have a greater deal of independence uh, to uh, monitor the situation within their own province uh, and they too are providing uh, supports of a similar nature uh, for those who are arriving and, and intend to travel to Quebec. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup à tous. I see uh, no more hands, uh, raised hands at this point. Je ne vois plus uh, de mains levées sur l'application Zoom. So I think it's time uh, to, uh, to call it uh, uh, for the day, for this press conference. Je crois que c'est à terminer cette conférence de presse. Merci beaucoup à tous les ministres et tous les journalistes présents. Thank you very much for all attendees and have a good day. Merci. Merci tout le monde. À la prochaine.